Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Julia. Today's tip of the day is, instead of sticking to one study location, alternating the room where you study improves retention. This tip is courtesy of the New York Times article um, entitled, Forget What You Know About Good Study Habits. Okay, we're going to jump right in. This is chapter two, solutions, and we have number one. Number one says that Nico applied for 120 jobs. He got first round interviews and second round interviews, and we want to know how many interview offers he got. So he got first round interviews for the first half of the jobs. So simply take half of 120, and then it says that he got second round interviews for 10% of the first round interviews. Not 10% overall, but 10% of these. So 10% of 60 is simply 6. It's 60 times 0.1, which is 6. So he had six second round interviews for a total of 66 interviews. Okay, so the answer is B. Number two, um, initially Kevin sold three-fourths of his hot peppers at the farmer's market. He didn't want to take all his hot peppers home, so he um, gave a discount on the hot peppers by 50%. So it said after he gave that discount, he was able to sell another um, 20 percent of the remaining hot peppers okay so not 20 percent total but 20 percent of the remaining so of means multiply and what remains if he sold three-fourths what remains is one-fourth okay since we have a percent times a fraction it would be most helpful to put these in the same form if you look at your answer choices they are in percent so you can feel free to turn these both into decimals and then back into percent so this is 0.2 times 0.25, which is 0.05, which in turn is 5%. So after he got the discount, he sold 20% of the remaining, not an additional 20%. It's very important. So that means he sold additional 5% of the original volume. So 3 fourths. If, you're not, if you don't know that that's 0.75, you simply do 3 divided by 4. You get 0.75, which is 75%. So Kevin sold 75% plus 5% for a total of 80%. And then be careful to answer the question. The question says, what percent did he take home? So we took 20% home because he sold 80%. So what's left out of 100% is 20%. So 20% D is the final answer. Number three. Number three says that Becca was at the same farmer's market as Kevin and she sold two-thirds of her product um, initially. She then took Kevin's lead and cut her prices in half, which resulted in her selling another 20% of her product. Notice this question differs from the question with Kevin in that after the discount she sold 20% of her product. Not 20% of the remaining, but 20% of the original. So the question asks, um, what fractional part of X, if X dollars is her total revenue, had she sold everything at full price, what fractional price um, of X was she able to sell? Okay, so how much money did she gross overall? So initially, she sold two-thirds of her product, so she sold two-thirds of X in terms of her revenue. Okay, after her discount, she sold 20%. However, she sold that 20% at half price. So that would only be 10% of the revenue of X because half of this 20% of the total revenue. So 20% times a half times X is simply 10% of X. And I'm going to write this as a fraction because we have a fraction right here. And our answer choice, if you look, our answer choices are in fractions. So she got two-thirds of X here and one-tenth of X here if we reduce. So we need to add our two fractions together, two-thirds X plus one-tenth X. You'll notice that our common denominator is 30. So if I multiply this by 10, I have to multiply the numerator by 10. And this becomes 3 over 30. So all together, and our X's are still here, so all together she grows 23 thirtieths X. Okay, number four. You see I have a calculator here. This problem is quite easy. We have to put these numbers in order from least to greatest. 
So the first thing you want to make sure that you do is make sure you do indeed do it from least to greatest. Um, the answer choices might also have the answer from greatest to least. If you're not paying attention, you can circle the wrong one. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is put your numbers in the same number form. In this case, it's easiest to turn everything into a decimal. So, 0.42%, this percent sign, if we drop it, we have to move the decimal over two places to the left. So this becomes 0.0042, okay? This one, 4 divided by 7, you see I have my calculator handy, you will do the same thing. This one is approximately 0.571. You just do 4 divided by 7 in your calculator. And then this first one is already in a decimal, 0.4. 4 divided by 9 is 0.4 repeating. So I'll just put a few 4's up and then followed by 0.39. Okay? So this is the least, 0 0.0042. 0 0.39 is the second one. 0 0.40 or 0 0.4, you could add a zero if you want, doesn't change the value, is the third one. The fourth one is four ninths and the fifth one is four sevenths, okay? Since you can use a calculator on the GRE, this has now become a very easy problem. So the answer is B. Number five. Number five tells us that Taylor lost eight pounds and that this represents 5% of her weight. So what you want to do is translate this word problem into an equation. So if you leave Taylor's weight, if you let that equal X, then eight pounds is equal to 5% of her original weight. So of means multiply. So what we do in this case, we just have a simple one-step equation. We want to isolate our variable by solving for x. So we divide both sides by 0 0.05 to get x by itself. You end up getting that x is 160. Now notice 160 is one of the answer choices, but it says how much does she now weigh. So don't do the whole problem and then fail to answer the question. So she originally weighed 160, she lost 8 pounds and she now weighs 152 pounds. So the answer then is D. Number six tells us that Carlos spent 85% of his paycheck and that he now has $30 left. What you have to do in a problem like this is figure out what percent the dollar amount represents. So he has $30 left and he spent 85% of his total paycheck. So the $30 represents the remaining 15%. Because he had 100% of his paycheck at the beginning, you take away 85%, so you're left with 15% of his total paycheck is $30. So you have 0.15x equals $30. Then you want to do divide by 0.15 on each side and you get that his original check was $200, okay? So it says, what was the amount of his check? So $200 is the amount of the check, so the variable is the answer. So $200, and that answer choice is C. Number seven. Number seven tells us that 12% of a number is 32, so 12% of means multiply, a number is your variable, is means equals 32. Then what is 60% of that number? So we're gonna talk about two ways to solve this. You might notice that 12 is a factor of 60. So 60 is actually five times 12. So that means 60% of that same number is going to be five times more than 32. So 32 times five is 160, okay? So you won't always notice something like that, and you don't have to. The alternative way to solve this is to solve for x up here, because this is a complete equation, so we're able to solve for x, and then plug the value for x that we find in down here for x, okay? So if you don't notice that 12 times 5 is 60, so 32 times 5 is our answer, simply solve for x here, and then plug it in down here, okay? So we can rewrite 12% x as 0.12x equal to 32. And then we're going to divide both sides by 0.12. So 
So this number is not going to work out too nicely. I think it's about um, 266, but I'm going to go ahead and double check that. So 32 divided by 0.12, yep, yeah, is 266 and 2 thirds. Okay, so now we replace this x with 266 and 2 thirds. And we multiply 60% times 266 and 2 thirds. So you're just going to multiply by 0.6 or 0 0.60 in your calculator. Okay? And then you get 160, which is what we got using the other method as well. So the answer to number 7 is 160. Number 10 tells us that Reggie's room is a mess, but after doing some straightening, he was able to find 80% of his baseball cards, but that left him with 12 missing cards. So similar to one of the earlier problems in the practice set, you have to figure out how the raw number relates to the percentage. So if 80% are found, and 12 cards are missing, that means that 20% of the cards are equal to 12% of the cards, okay? We don't know how many cards that we have, so we'll say that x equals the number of cards, okay? Therefore, 20%, since 80% are found, 20% are missing, 20% of the total number of cards is equal to 12 cards. So that means that 0.2x equals 12. If I divide both sides by 0.2, I get that x equals 60. Okay? It's a good thing that I wrote down what our variable represented because we might think that the answer is 60. However, the question asks us how many cards did he find? Okay? Well, there were 60 originally. He can't find 12 of them. So that means he found 48 cards. Number 11, our final one of this practice set. So we are asked to compare the value of quantity A with the value of quantity B to see which one is bigger. If you recall from the previous practice set, um, in the solutions I told you if there are no variables in the problem that the answer cannot be D because we can determine whether one is bigger than the other or if they are equal. So this problem is actually very straightforward. All you have to do is multiply these together because they ask us for 40% of 20% of 12 and again of means multiply. So I can change these into decimals 0.4 times 0.2 times 12 0.4 times 0.2 is 0.08. It's 8 hundredths, not 8 tenths. If you're not good with that, put it in your calculator to make sure you get the right um, number of decimal places. But since there's one decimal place here and one decimal place here, we will have a total of two decimal places here. Okay? So that 0.08 is multiplied by 12. 0.08 times 12 is 0.96. Okay? Now we go over to here. We want 8% of 150% of 16. So times and times. So 8% is 0.08. 150%. This is more than 1 because 100% is 1. So when you drop this percent sign, you move your decimal place over two places to the left. So it's 1.5 or 1.50. The zero is not important there. And then we multiply by 16. So if you multiply by 0.08 times 1.5, times 16, you end up getting 1.92. So quantity B is bigger, it's actually twice as big as quantity A. Okay, that, that concludes um, the review of the practice problems for Chapter 2. Go ahead and go to our study plan and make sure you do the official guide problems that are recommended to go with this chapter and then get started with Chapter 3. Good luck!